aim to motivate and inspire viewers to enjoy the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to episode 68 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In this episode, I give you an update on my current knitting project shown here. I will show you how I steaked that cardigan because this was a cardigan that was knitted in the round and then steaked. And I'll tell you a lot more about that in the next section. And in the layer cake part of the podcast, I show you the new summer play suits that are on pre-order at the moment until the end of Monday, the 16th of May for delivery in the second half of May. But first, an update on my knitting. So yeah, my Judith cardigan by Jackie Bogg. Really enjoy the knit. Very um, easy, easy, relatively small motifs. So no long floats. All the floats are short. There, there is no weaving in of floats. There are only one or two small sections where you end up knitting with three colors, but the uh, that will be like one round or something like that. The rest is all with two colors. So it is um, relatively easy color work. Great um, project if you want to try out color work, but haven't got any experience with it yet. Definitely recommend it. And I absolutely adore the colors that are in this particular kit that Jackie sent me. So um, as you can see, I finished uh, the body of the uh, cardigan. It's got a raglan sleeve and I then added a little saddle top of the sleeve to it. I will explain that to you in the uh, section where I talk in detail about the steek and the buttons that I've chosen and the band that I'm going to, the ribbon that I'm going to put here on the inside as, as a finishing touch. I don't actually need to, but I really like that idea. And then all that's left after that is to knit the neckband all the way around. It'll be similar to this uh, button band. I've done the button band slightly wider than what the pattern calls for. All the um, edgings are quite narrow in this cardigan, but I liked the idea of giving it a little bit more presence because of the buttons that I've chosen. So um, again, I'll show you more of that in, in a flat lay that I filmed in the next section. And then there's just the neckband, if you like, going around and then it's finished. So without going into any more detail here, I will show you now the cutting of the steak and I'll talk you through the detail of the ribbon that I've chosen to put on the inside and the buttons. So here we are with my close to finished Judith cardigan by Jackie Bogg. I came in to the studio really early this morning so there's a fair amount of traffic noise in the background. Forgive me for that. It's just people getting to their work I guess so it's, it's busy. I came in early to pick buttons or to see whether I had buttons that I liked and to look for a ribbon to finish the steak on the inside of the cardigan. And then it occurred to me that because I'm pretty much at the point that I'm going to cut the steak, I'll show you exactly how I've prepared that and, uh, and what my choices are for, uh, for ribbon, etc. There are a couple of other things that um, I want to tell you about with regards to the cardigan. I've knitted the size large, which is, I think it's the third size along on the different options. And um, with this uh, cardigan, you knit it in the round and then steek it in the front, um, obviously. So I followed the exact instructions. And when I got to the neck section, the same um, issue that I had with the previous jumper that I knitted by Jackie Bog, finishing the last 
uh, motif of the neckline of the of the yoke because it's knitted bottom up with a raglan shaped sleeve as you can see here I got to a point where you normally would have I normally would have stopped as I have here at the top of this this purple a uh, pinkish purple motif and the motif ran around as you can see runs around here so that's why my needles were as well but when I tried that on the neckline was too wide and the, the, the motor finished at the tips of my shoulders instead of around my neck. But because this is a raglan shaped cardigan, you end up with the raglan panels of the sleeves here on the top of your shoulder. So I ended up making a very simple adjustment that effectively turns this shoulder into, I think it's called a saddle. So what I did is I kept knitting back and forth just the stitches of the of the shoulder, the shoulder stitches. You can see them coming together here with the, the two raglan lines. So I was at this point and what I've done progressing is just knit together every time I got to the beginning and end of a row is knit the first and last stitch of that row together with one of the stitches that I of course still had on the needle from the front and back panels. So the edge stitch on this side is knitted together with this uh, stitches of the front panel and same with the back. So coming up on the sleeve you then end up topping off that shoulder with this this diagonal line coming up and then going flat on top of your shoulder so this little segment here of three extra motives which are motives that have been used throughout the jumper and i just did them in in a different color combination sitting on top of your shoulder and ultimately forming a perfect neckline because of course i did the same on the other side so that's what you can see here. So that's the only adjustment that I made to the uh, pattern so far. And when you then finish uh, the body of the jumper, you end up securing the uh, steek stitches, then you cut the steek, and then you pick up and knit the stitches for the front edging as you can see here the band that will have the the buttons on it um but when i when i got to that point i was in the middle of watching a tv program and thought nope i'm just gonna keep going it doesn't really matter whether i steek first and then uh, uh, pick up and, and knit these edges or do it the other way around so i picked up the stitches along the edges of the uh, seven steek stitches in the middle here and knitted my bands with the little uh, buttonholes as prescribed in the pattern. I did that just completely according to the pattern, obviously on the right hand side of the front. And then after that, I secured the uh, steek stitches. Jackie very helpfully gives you a couple of uh, references of different instructions and a video of possible ways to secure steek stitches because there are lots of, of different possibilities. I just went for a chain, a, a line of, of chain crochet stitches, which you end up stitching with the, the, the yarn that you are using at the back of the work. And then you put the crochet needle through the middle of a stitch, pick up the yarn, pull it through, and that's how you end up making a chain stitch right through the middle of the stitches on either side of the, the steek stitch, the middle stitch. That's how I did it. There are lots of different options and I won't go through a proper tutorial of them here because there are plenty of them online. But that's why you see this gray line, these, these little tram lines, these two gray lines running on either side of the middle stitch of the front. So now I'm ready to cut my steaks. So I thought I might as well do that on video. But before then, I'm quickly going to share with you the rib ribbon that I found and the buttons that I found that I'm going to put on this cardigan. And 
a little trick that I'm going to employ in order to use these buttons because, first of all, like I said, I've put my buttonholes in the, the, the right panel of the cardigan so that I can, you know, close it right over left. But that's before I chose my buttons. And the buttons that I've got, I've made six buttons holes, buttonholes and lo and behold, I've got these two or these six buttons that are just glorious in terms of how they go with the colors of this cardigan, but they are all different sizes and they're also made of ceramic. I bought them in a gallery in, I think in Stockbridge. Anyway, they're, they're all different sizes and because they are made out of ceramic, I'm not sure whether they can be washed. So what I'm going to do is a trick that I recommend to anyone wanting to attach buttons to a piece of knitting that are easily removed. And what you end up doing is you can go about this two ways. You can either knit buttonholes in both sides of your button band or just one side like what I have done. So I'll explain about the, the, the two sides of buttonholes versus one. What I'm going to do is for each of these buttons, it will get a little stalk made out of thread, of course. And on the other side of the stalk normally would be your knitting. And in my case, there will be a small button, like a shirt button or sh something bigger, something the right size for these little buttonholes. So I can attach that button to the cardigan by putting the button that's behind it through this hole and then the button will sit on it like this with the shirt button on the other side. Now, if I have put buttonholes in both of my button bands, I can then proceed to push that little shirt button or whatever it is through the button on this button, button hole on this button band and that secures the whole thing. So it would have the, the button here on the outside, the little stalk of thread going through both of the button band buttonholes, and then the small button on the inside. In this case, though, I didn't come up with this idea. I didn't come up with the plan to uh, attach my buttons that way until I chose these irregular sized buttons. And of course, some of these buttons fit through the buttonholes that I've made easily and others would be a complete nightmare. This one, of course, being a case in point. So I attach my little butts, buttons behind it, but it, I do that the other way around. So my cardigan will end up having a closure as if it's a men's cardigan. Who cares? I don't. So. I'm going to attach these buttons on the outside with a little shirt button on the inside and the shirt button then gets pushed through the buttonhole on this button band and my cardigan will close the other way around. If I then am in a situation that I want to wash the cardigan, I then take the front buttons off so I will sew the little back buttons on separately so they don't have to come off if this ever needs to get, get washed. But the, the front ones will come off separately. I may even use a ribbon, for example, to attach these instead of thread. I will show you what I go for later. I will play around with different options. I've got some really nice narrow ribbons and maybe I'll use those instead. Watch this space. I'll share it with you. So. These are my button choices. I think they are so nice. It's too good an opportunity to miss. There are so many matched colors there that I have to use this. I, I really like it. I've had them for a number of years. I often buy buttons without knowing what, what I'm gonna do with them. And then at some point they will come into their own. And I think this is their opportunity to shine. Now, as for the ribbon, little bit of same story really. I bought this ribbon from Textile Garden along with a whole bunch of other ribbons and I bought it typically without any project in mind and thinking I'm just going to get this and at some point I'll know what to use it for. 
and same as with the buttons i think the color matching between the colors used in the cardigan and on the ribbon is amazing so i'm going to use this on the inside to hide the edging of my uh, steaked front so i'm going to cut the steak now and then show you how i'm going to cover the steak on the inside with that with that band so I seek out the middle point of the knitting at the bottom. We're going to cut through the middle of the middle row of steak stitches. So I just follow the line through the middle of the stitches and cut through it. And um, if I want to secure these stitches any further, because Steaked stitches don't just unravel like mad, um, as so many people are often worried about. It doesn't work like that. Knitting ravels very quickly up and down, but doesn't ra unravel that quickly across. But if I want to secure these stitches any further, I can give them a good blast of hot steam. That'll set them a little bit more. In my case, I've already steam blocked this cardigan, so the stitches are already a little bit fulled into each other. Here we go. It's actually interesting. First of all, it's very satisfying to do this, knit, this uh, cutting. I've never steaked before. This is the first time I've ever tried it. And interestingly enough, as you cut your scissors, you can feel that the scissors kind of follow, got a bit of a wonky stitch here, they kind of follow the uh, ladder through the middle of the stitch. And if you kind of go a little bit left or right, you can immediately feel an increase in resistance of your cut. So you can very easily stay straight. You could almost do this with your eyes closed because your scissors and the feel of the cutting that your scissors do will guide you. I realize that that middle stitch that I am cutting through is still on one of my needles, so I'll pull it off the needle, leave the others on for now. As you can see, I've got three more steak stitches here and I've got three steak stitches there. This pattern has got seven stitches in the middle, so it's got a very secure um, center with seven stitches that is quite generous I think most steaks are like five or so stitches wide there we are so cut through that's my steak complete there was a little thread still there and now you can see I've kind of woven in not particularly neatly all the ends of the uh, uh, yarn as I changed colors of course so often so they're all woven in but like I said not very neatly because these steaked edges that are kind of secured by that chain stitch running up on either side are going to be folded over like this thereby covering all my um, uh, woven in ends so they're going to be folded like that. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to hand sew the ribbon. I think I'm going to do it this way around. I don't know why. I just have a feeling it should be this way around. Go with my gut. So I'm going to cover half of the folded in edge. And the other half is going to be on the inside of the cardigan. And that's how my ribbon will run all the way down. So folding the whole thing back in, doing the same on the other side. The front of my cardigan will come together like such. And in my case, do you see that there's a color difference between the two button bands? What I did is because by the end of the cardigan, of course, some of the colors you're starting to run low on, 
and I definitely didn't have enough of the color called beryl that was used for the cast on edges of the bottom and my sleeve but there are three or four different grays that are all slightly different this is a slightly bluish gray then here I've got a slightly greenish gray and this is a gray with a lilac -y hue so I then have a fourth one that I'm going to use for the uh, neck band because that's still to do so this is how my cardigan will look once finished so this is what my front is going to look like of course i'm going to have this side on top because of the way i'm going to do that construction with my double row of buttons so my buttons are going to be here peeking to see where approximately my buttonholes are underneath there we are. So that's how it's going to look closed. This is going to be on the inside, my lovely ribbon. And I will be back um, in the next episode showing you what the finished cardigan looks like with the finished edging on the inside and the finished neckline. And of course, show it off. I've just taken a photograph yesterday wearing the cardigan, um, unsteaked as it was, which I will show you um, as well here. So a sneak peek of what the finished one is going to look like approximately. But you can see by the look on my face that I'm quite chuffed with how it's looking so far. And um, yeah, so far so good. And um, watch this space for the next episode for the finished cardigan modeled in episode 69. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, steaking session. Without further ado, we're going to move on to layer cake. I won't wax lyrical yet about my next knitting project after the Judith cardigan, mainly because I haven't decided yet. More about that in the next podcast, or I'll probably start rabbiting on about it on Instagram as soon as I've decided what I'm going to do next. So that's it for knitting this time. Let's have a look at the Lay Cake Summer Play Suits. Enjoy! Summer Play Suits! A first for the slow wardrobe this year. The play suit that we all know and love and wear year round, but in certain climes, including the south of England, there are certain times of year, especially in the summer, where even just a single layer of a play suit is a little bit much in our heavier weight linen. So I've selected three colors. They're all subtle stripes that are going to be made available for you. They're ready for pre-order. Uh, as a summer version of the play suit. Now, summer version does not mean that you can only wear them in small brackets of the year, small center parts of the year where um, the temperature really is higher because of course you can layer them as per usual. And the uh, summer linen in our verticomas doesn't mean just summer. It just means slightly less heavy than our winter linen. In terms of grams, our winter linen is 245 grams, and this is a 200 grams, which is still um, a lot heavier than most of the commercial linens that you find out there, which tend to be between 140 and 180 grams. So, still hard wearing enough. Not quite as hard wearing, of course, as the very heavy linen, but I've been test wearing one of these for the last couple of months and perfect so this is the first color that i'm showing you here wearing it with a sweet pea um, love top underneath and this is the kingfisher stripe all three of the stripes have a subtle dark stripe that has black in it and um, a, a second color but they are then shot through with a third which creates a subtle stripe in the accent color that you end up seeing. 
Kingfisher, obviously a stripe that's been shot through with a very, very bright Kingfisher blue, which ends up lifting the two stripes that are in the background, the two colors of the stripe that are in the background and creating this very happy, very colorful play suit that can be worn by itself or dressed up and down with other layer cakes. Now, the um, subtle pale teal color, which is um, the um, sweet pea, which is a, a cross weave of a pale teal and a pale lilac, ends up toning down this bright blue a little bit. But I will show you some other bright colors that help this color really zing. Starting, of course, with the most popular recent multicolor, our large purple check. Let's throw over a um, smock over the top of this outfit and see what the impact is of the large purple check in combination with the Kingfisher. And here it is. As you can see very clearly in combination with the large purple check, the Kingfisher is a bluer color than the um, dark teal, for example, which is also a really nice color to wear with the large purple check. But as you can see, this clearly picks up on the blues in the large purple check color and wonderful combination if you are here for that for that bright blue color that you can see back in the checks i will show you next what the dark teal looks like in combination with kingfisher so that if you have this or the dark teal or both already in your layer cake collection you wonder how they go with kingfisher and how the kingfisher compares especially with that teal color then i'll show you now here we go. Dark teal with Kingfisher. As you can see, Kingfisher is bright, but because of the dark stripes, it is, as I try to achieve with so many layer cake colors, it's bright, but not loud. And next to the dark teal, you can really see that. They again, look wonderful together. And I hope that I'll be able to communicate that with all three of these stripes, whether you go for Kingfisher, Magpie or the Starling, they all have their uses, but most importantly, they almost all cross over with the other colors. You can wear them across the collection and it's very difficult to come across a combination of any of these stripes with a fabric color in the collection there you go like that doesn't really go so instead of going like in the same direction i'll show you a really strong contrast with the kingfisher that really pumps up the color and shows you how bright it is by contrasting it with a, a color that's on the opposite side of the wheel and that's bright as well uh, chartreuse let's go large step top in chartreuse worn with the kingfisher and look how it bounces and 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 magnifies the blue of the kingfisher color but you can accentuate this blue without going super bright as well i'll give you an example of a different step top kingfisher worn with blush this is a blush step top in the small size so i was wearing the large before and this is the smaller one you can see it's a bit shorter but just to accentuate soft contrast can still really pump up the volume of the blue of the kingfisher so to keep going with the contrasts i'll keep wearing this but i'll swap the play suit for one of the other colors let's move to the purpley one starling Let's see what that looks like. This is the Starling play suit, as I said, worn with the blush. And I hope it comes across on the screen if this all looks really difficult to distinguish from each other when I see this back when I edit 
then I'll show you some close-ups of the three fabrics next to each other as well. But the main thing to communicate here is how much softer the starling is and that the main impression from a distance is a grey stripe next to a aubergine stripe. So aubergine, a purpley red colour and then a grey next to it. That's the prevailing colour of starling and that's why I've gone for that name because of the feather colours of uh, starlings as we know them and of course uh, this soft pink is lovely to wear with it i will show you as well because i'm still wearing it the um, uh, color of the sweet pea in combination with the starling here you can see the sweet pea and again soft soft colors really nice complementary colors and a really uh, muted palette the other thing that i've done i'll do it with the th third place you're going to add it as well i've added the um a kingfisher play suit on the mannequin there so it's still in the picture to help show you the contrast between the two and um, i will show you some of the colors that I've, sh I've just put with the um, some of the other colors that I just put with the Kingfisher as well with Starling so you can see how they go together how they compare and contrast but one of the main ones that I want to show you because of the similarities is as you can probably guess Dark Moth so let's have a look at Dark Moth in combination with Starling and here it is for all the lovers of Dark Moth out there, Starling may be your first choice. Again, I'll show you a close-up of the two together, but the purple color, that soft muted uh, aubergine color of Dark Moth is exactly what you see back in the Starling stripe right next to that gray, gray stripe that makes it up. So they're really, the really marriage made in heaven kind of material here. But I'll keep going with some of the contrast. Let's have a look at the chartreuse and starling together. So those of you who have chartreuse and dark moth in your collection already know how well these go together and that the dark moth, or in this case, the starling stripe will look slightly more purple when you contrast it with a color like this, a greeny yellow like the um, chartreuse. So I'll keep going. Um, I'll show you the dark teal as well to see how that goes with Starling. And then also, most importantly, because I think another match made in heaven is the new cherry color that you've just seen in the love dress and tulip dress in combination with starling because it's all in that in that purpley ready pinky sphere they go really nicely but first dark teal dark teal and starling muted very held back very together as an outfit and just as pretty but for those of you who don't like those louder colors like the kingfisher then this might be a beautiful alternative. I will show you though that it really doesn't matter. Any of these three stripes look great with all these different layer cake colors. And I could keep going through the entire collection at infinitum, really. They all kind of go together. There's nothing where you go like, mm. and it's because they're all neutrals again. I keep calling them neutrals, but they really, they really are. And, you know, how colorful can neutrals be? But I'm trying to show you, they really are. They really go together. So um, the one that I wanted to show you of the new colors is cherry together with the starling. So let's have a look at that, because again, it's a really, really nice combination. Here it is. Cherry love dress in the regular length together with my Starling play suit. Aren't they glorious together? There's just enough red 
in that aubergine starling stripe to pick up on that beautiful black cherry color in the uh, cherry linen and together they are just making magic together i think now i'm wearing it over the top what would it look like the other way around because of course right now the cherry color is in the lead but what about giving starling the main role in this ensemble let's have a look starling first Cherry second, softly, softly, and really pretty. So, on to the third play suit, Magpie Stripe. After both Kingfisher and Starling, I'll put Starling on my lady over there, and then I'll put my um, Magpie Stripe play suit on. And just to inform you that Magpie play suit has been worn to shreds <laughs> has been worn a lot over the last couple of months and just seeing it here together to new to, together next to two uh, new play suits because the kingfisher and the starling play suits are both new but the uh, magpie stripe is has been worn by me a lot you can see how the fabric is holding up through multiple washes let's go Magpie Stripe, worn and washed multiple times, worn here with the cherry love dress underneath. And out of the three, I guess, I was going to say the most neutral of the three, but it's difficult to say really. I would say that if you are a staunch lover of black and wearing black, go for the magpie. If you are a staunch lover of grey and wearing grey colours, then maybe the star, starling is the one for you. Just because of the softness of the stripes, because of the combination of colours, the black actually looks quite black and the uh, black in the starling looks much more grey. So. Hopefully that will help you choose, but let's look at the magpie with some of the other colors that I showed you before. Um, let's start with dark teal again. So for those of you who actually own a, a garment in magpie, maybe one of the love dresses, you will know that the blue in magpie has got a lean towards green, slightly petroly. And you can see that back a little bit when you wear it with dark teal. It's not a blue blue, it's a greenish blue. And that looks really nice in combination with the dark teal. But let's not leave it at that. Let's show it again as well in combination with large purple check. Because I forgot to do that with the starling. But all three of these stripes go really well with the large purple check. I may throw um, the uh, dress, the love dress in the large purple check that I have over the top of the starling. Let's see if that works. Large purple check with the magpie stripe and the cherry love dress underneath that. As you can see, lovely combination. And you can see there the starling uh, as well in combination with the large purple check, which is a lovely combination as well. And because they're also muted, they can all pass and be um, interchanged with each other, really. So I will take that love dress back off because otherwise you can't see the starling anywhere. You can just see it at the bottom there. But I hope I'm communicating the point that I'm making in terms of how easily interchangeable they are and that which color you choose in terms of the play suit is really more of a case of if you would wear the play suit without anything else over the top of it would you be comfortable with any of these three colors and which of those three colors would you like then because if you wear them in combination with other play suits 
they're almost completely interchangeable. So um, let's go back through the spectrum again and show you both the uh, pale blush color as well as the chartreuse in combination with magpie. Magpie and chartreuse, large step top or magpie and blush. Now this is the smaller step top, which is why you can clearly see the sleeves of my size one love dress sticking out underneath. Altogether, a really lovely combination. And as you can see, the magpie works really well with these soft pinkish colors, as does the starling. So, nearly gone full circle. Of course, I will also show you the sweet pea, which is what I started with when I wore that together with the Kingfisher. I'll wear the sweet pea together with the magpie and show you the lineup of the three play suits together to contrast their colors. So here's all three of us next to each other. Let me worm my belly in between these two. Kingfisher, Magpie Stripe, and Starling Stripe. The three stars of this month's pre-order and available for you, for you to order until the end of Monday, the 16th of May. Then we'll start making them that week and you will receive them uh, towards the end of May in the mail. I hope you enjoyed this. And I will see you again very soon.